All right, welcome back to the channel. So Errol Spence Jr. snaps on Ring Magazine and ESPN writers have him losing to Danny Garcia. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Errol Spence Jr., the WBC and the IBF welterweight champion is coming back to boxing. The fight between he and Danny Garcia have been has been announced already. Uh, a pay-per-view matchup that is going to take place uh, in the second uh, uh, in 2021, sometime between September and November. Right now, that they I believe they have a tentative dates uh, tentative date set, or they have a date set, but I'm not giving any solid dates or believing any solid dates about any fights with this whole virus thing going on because I think a lot of the fighters and a lot of fights are going to be moved around. But as of right now, uh, Errol Spence Jr. is set to fight Danny Garcia in a pay-per-view matchup, which I am very, very excited about. Um, Danny Garcia is a very good fighter. He is a former WBC welterweight champion. He's a former unified champion at 140 pounds. He's beaten, you know, he's the type of dude that has come in there as an underdog and beaten guys that were he was expected to lose to in the past. He did that with um, with Lucas Matisse. Um, Lucas Matisse, he did that with uh, with Amir Khan. So I'm used to seeing Danny Garcia go in there with, with top guys and give him a good fight. And some types, and, you know, in some occasions, just straight out beat a dude that, I, that a lot of people didn't think he was going to be able to beat. So this fight coming up with Errol Smith Jr., I think is a very, very solid fight. Now, the reactions that are, that there's two interesting reactions that took place over the weekend and... One was from Errol Spence Jr. The other one I, I heard from in an article, I heard about in an article on Boxing News 24. Shout out to Boxing News 24. I don't always agree with their writer's opinion, but they do a very good job, very consistent, you know, in putting news out and sharing their opinion. Very good writers. So I definitely, you know, um, say, you know, check them out if you've not already checked them out. But they write a story about Steve Kim saying that he believed that, um, that Danny Garcia could beat Errol Spence Jr. in this matchup. So, the two things that we're going to talk about in, in the video was one, something Errol Spence Jr. said about Ring Magazine and the, and the fact that Steve Kim and these guys are predicting um, or saying that there's a significant chance, it's probably the better way to say it, that Errol Spence Jr. could lose to Danny Garcia. So a li now a little bit of background, obviously not a lot because by now everybody, all you guys know who Errol Spence Jr. is and what happened, but Errol Spence Jr. had a car accident back uh, in late 2000. Uh, in 19, very scary situation after his, uh, a few weeks after his fight with Sean Porter, um, you know, his car flipped over a bunch of times. He got thrown out of the car. Uh, people were very much concerned about Errol Smith Jr.'s, you know, life, let alone whether or not he was going to come back to the sport of boxing. But, you know, he's a very physically strong guy. Uh, and because he was so strong and because he was very, very lucky, you know, he got thrown from his car. He landed on cement. All he had was really some deep bruising, my understanding is. And then his, and his teeth got knocked out of his mouth. So he's back ready to go. Um, After, now, if he winds up fighting in September, it, it'll be just short of a year being of him being out of the ring. But Steve Kim brings up the fact that, hey, you know, we don't know, you know, it, that, that Errol Smith Jr. is a bit of a mystery. That we don't know what he's going to be when he comes back from his accident and whether or not, you know, that, you know, he's going to be able to come all the way back. Now, uh, to address that point, I think what we've been seeing from Errol Smith Jr. over the last few weeks is a very good sign towards that fight. Because when you see him in uh, in the videos that he's been releasing, listening to the things that he's been saying, especially what he said, uh, you know, today, I saw it today on Twitter, where he talked about what, you know, what he was doing and how he had a steady decline in his interest in boxing, right? Or then he said, you know, he used to fight, it used to take like maybe a day or two off after training, you know, after a fight, and then he'd be right back in training. And then he said, well, you know, after it went from a couple days to, you know, I would take a couple weeks off. And then it went from take a couple weeks off to, you know, he wasn't gonna start working out until he got his actual fight date, which means, you know, that he is right, you know, pretty much just a little training before he goes into training camp. And how that, 
you know, affected his conditioning in the last couple fights that he had. The one with Sean Porter and the fight with Mikey Garcia, which, you know, was the first like little incidents that, you know, started to on many people's mind were like, oh, maybe Arrow's slipping a little bit, you know, because, you know, he doesn't look as powerful. He doesn't look as um, intense as he used to. Right. So, you know, he's acknowledging these things and saying that that was the, those are the case. So if that's if it is the case that, you know, obviously it was the case that he was um, always happens to me, man. I, I got to remember to turn my phone off. Um, yeah. Um. Jeez, lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so Errol Spence Jr. is back into, you know, a situation where he is training full and, you know, to the best of his ability. You see him in, you know, in the videos, he looks in shape, right? He's clearly working out his, you know, his body is pretty much looking like it's right near fi fight weight. And this is well before, you know, that. and so consequently, he's been working out, you know, for months before, uh, the announcement of this Danny Garcia fight. So if that's the case, you know, you have just as high a likelihood that, that Errol Smith Jr. will be coming in much better shape against Danny Garcia than he did against Sean Porter or he did against, um, uh, who did he fight before that? He fought uh, Mikey Garcia or, or, Carlo, or Carlos Ocampo or Lamont Peterson because, you know, that he started talking about how that stuff started taking place. It, but that was more than likely after the Kel, after the Kell Brook fight. So you're talking about the Lamont Peterson fight, the uh, Carlos Ocampo fight, the Mikey Garcia fight, and and the Sean Porter. So, but now uh, saying all that, I I understand that it's reasonable from Steve Kim and those guys to doubt what this guy, you know, doubt, you know, whether or not, you know, he's going to come back all the way. And I and so and I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think he's actually there's a very good chance that he's going to come back stronger than he was uh than he was before right um now the this is the thing that Errol Smith Jr. said though and I think that this is something that the boxing media needs to pay attention to and or we need to pay attention to with the boxing media because I you know I'm not quite sure whether or not or how this is ever going to change with the certain you know with certain members of the media but you know Errol Smith Jr. says hey man well, I should be on the cover of Ring Magazine Right. I should be on the cover of Ring Magazine because I'm back. Why? You know, and so my thought was, man, Arrow wants to be on the cover of Ring Magazine. Does he deserve to be on the cover of Ring Magazine? Why not? <laughs> he just got announced. That's the biggest fight of the year. There's no other fight. There's no fight that is announced that has a legitimate date that is as big as the Arrow Smith Jr. and Danny Garcia fight. But yeah, man, why not put him on the cover of Mag uh, on, on Ring Magazine? Right. Well, we know why. <laughs> we know why he's not featured on Ring Magazine because he doesn't sign because he's not signed with Top Rank, and he's not signed with and he's not signed with um, uh, Golden Boy Promotions. If Errol Spence Jr. was signed by Top Rank, or definitely if he was uh signed by Golden Boy Promotions, he would have been on the cover. Would have been on the cover. Probably would have been on the cover after he beat Kell Brook. They, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, you know, obviously they're not going to do that for Errol Spence Jr., but you know, that's a bit of the problem that there is with boxing. And I know I've been going on in that, uh, going on about it for a while. I'm going to continue to go on about it, uh, going about it. Uh, boxing media does not seem to be interested, seem to be interested in covering, you know, in a positive way, America's the best American fighters. They are very, very much tied to the best fighters from a particular promoter. Canelo Alvarez is the best, is the best fighter for Golden Boy Promotions. Golden Boy Promotions owns Ring Magazine. As a consequence, uh, Canelo Alvarez is going to be treated well by uh, by Ring Magazine. It's my personal belief because Canelo, uh, because uh, Oscar De La Hoya, or rather because Errol Spence Jr., guys like Deontay Wilder, uh, Jermel Charlo, Jamal Charlo, and these other Americans that are with the PBC, because they're with the PBC, they're not going to be treated well by Ring Magazine, because Ring Magazine is owned by Oscar De La Hoya, and Oscar De La Hoya has a long-standing long beef with the PBC, because most of the fighters that are with the PBC, definitely they're, they're big headline fighters, with the exception of Manny Pacquiao and Gervonta Davis, with the exception of Manny Pacquiao and Gervonta Davis, they were all with top, they were all with, uh, with Golden Boy at a certain point in time, man, and they lost them all, and they lost them to the PBC, so I don't see... Uh, them. Okay, that was funny. My nose was itching for like three minutes and I could not find a way to scratch it. And then I just had to stop. 
my video all together, man. Oh, the editing woes, the editing woes. But anyway, man, Errol Spence Jr. definitely deserves uh, a lot of accolades from major uh, from major boxing outlets. But it doesn't seem like he's going to get it uh, because in the words of what is that guy's name? Chris Mannix. There is a dysfunctional relationship between uh, between the PBC and the boxing media. So as a result, those guys are not going to push them very hard. Now, what that what that um, dysfunctional relationship is more than likely is that they're not getting interviews or not getting inside scoops from Al Heyman because Al Heyman won't talk to him. Bob Arum, uh, I promise you, Mike Coppinger can talk to Bob Arum when he wants to talk to Bob Arum. Uh, Steve Kim, Dougie Fisher, those guys can talk to Bob Arum when they want to talk to him. They can talk, or, you know, I'm sure maybe not right at the minute, but if they want to talk to him, they can get on his schedule. If they want to talk to uh, Oscar De La Hoya, they can call, get on the phone with Oscar De La Hoya, you know, maybe not right that second, but they can get to Oscar De La Hoya and they can develop personal relationships. I'm sure many of them have friendly, cordial relationships with Oscar De La Hoya. So, right, and have access to Canelo Alvarez and, and inside information from, you know, uh, from those guys. But they don't have that with Oscar. They don't have that with with um, uh, Al Heyman. Consequently, they don't really know what they're trying, what he's trying to do ahead of time. And if he's not cutting them in and making it worth their while monetarily, they're not going to do it. So you'll see, you'll continue to have scenarios where Errol Spence Jr. and guys are like, hold on, man, when am I going to get my, when am I going to get my acknowledgement for what I'm doing and being one of the biggest draws in boxing? Because that's what Errol Spence Jr. is. He's one of the biggest draws in boxing and he's well on his way to being the best and the one of the biggest, if not the biggest. And especially if he's able to beat Danny Garcia and be able to clean up the welterweight division, man, the sky's the limit for this kid. You would think that the media would want to celebrate it in America, but that's not how they roll. Anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Oh, also, man, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like, share the video. Thank you to everybody that supports on Patreon, everybody that supports on uh, in the live streams that we do and as members of the channel. And with that, I'm out. Peace. Peace.